Hello. Today I'm going to break this battery up. In fact, I'm going to do it right now. That slides off. Oh, will it slide off? Yeah, it's sliding off like so. Oh, it's quite stiff. There we are. And what I'm going to do is leave that to one side. I'm going to turn this into a 4S pack. So four of these modules uh, in series. So it'll be 4S4P. Then I'm going to attach this balancer so that we uh, get all the cells in balance. Now we know that they're all in balance because they're all paralleled up. So they're in balance to start with anyway. Then I'm going to try and tip that balance. How will I do that? I'll put a bulb or something across one cell so that it changes uh, its uh, state of charge compared to the others, changes its voltage. And then I want to try and get this ammeter involved in the circuit, powered by one of these little boost converters. Yeah, I'm going to do all that. So first things first, I'm going to take off the linking strips that link my four modules together. So all these are completely separate. I'll do that off camera. Okay, that's done. So these should come apart now, like so. And I think what I'm going to do is have a flat arrangement. Uh, obviously, I'll need to alternate positive and negative um, so that uh, I can... Well, I just want a flat arrangement. Right, that's how I want it. Um, so this will be my uh, outside positive, outside negative, and then I'll link all the rest up. So I need to get some link strips across here and across here to start with. Right, so the links are done between neg pos here and neg pos here. So now I need to link the center two here. Uh, that should be like so and like so. And then that's my outer pause and that's my outer neg. I'll just tighten these down. Right, the battery pack is done. Uh, yes, that's pause and neg there. So what I want to do now is get some little solder ring terminals on the ends of here. Do it all nice with heat shrink. Put this on the battery, probably with this connector disconnected. And then plug this in and check that the touch switch work works and the lights come on and so on. Right, using these multi-comp uh, terminal ground lugs M3, these things, I have put uh, five of them on the end of the five wires on this plug. So these will just bolt straight onto uh, terminals on the battery. So let's do that next. Is that out of focus? Perhaps it is slightly. And that looks like that. So black goes on to the most negative, then a red, another red, another red, and the most positive red goes on to the most positive. Let's just check I've got these in the right sequence. That is the next one back. Then the next one back is that one. The middle one, yeah, then that one, then the black. Okay, so now I can plug in the board which I will do and we'll see what it does hopefully not blow up now will it light up if I press touch it does the blue LED comes on um, but there's not much more to see than that it's now balancing the cells but we know they're all in balance anyway because they were all paralleled up um, not so long ago now I was just wondering if this is a um, click on click off type action and it might be actually that blue LED I think it's starting to get dim so touch that no touch touch off the only problem is the blue LED fades out really very slowly so I think it's fading out now and press the touch switch again to turn it on press the touch switch to turn it off but you don't see the result of your pressing of the touch switch immediately it takes a while for that blue led to fade out and in fact the camera um, enhances that effect because that's now very dim but the camera picks it up as quite bright so press the touch switch again to turn it back on so yes it does seem to be uh what's it called where it alternates between two states well doing that anyway 
Okay, a bit of blue tack, I think, and I'll just stick it on here. Got to be careful it doesn't touch anything while I'm doing this. Oi! Knocked everything over. A uh, bit of blue tack there, so I'll put four pieces of blue tack on and just stick it down. So that's running, uh, balancing. Let's touch the touch switch to turn that off. It's a shame you don't get feedback of having done that. But that does gradually fade out. Okay, what I want to do now is put this ammeter on. Now we should see no current flowing because all the cells are in balance. Um, now, black here is connected to the thin black. I've checked that with a continuity test. So uh, black is ground is continuous on this. Same here, uh, the negative output is common to the negative input. So everything is common on black. Now my idea is to attach this so that it's output. And I believe that this is 12 volts uh, because actually A and B are linked with little bridging links, uh, probably zero ohm resistors. So I'm going to attach that right up near the ammeter, cut these wires really short. That will put the output of this, which is 12 volts onto this meter. Um, the input of this, we don't need a black wire because the black wire is connected through the thin black and through the thick black and the thick black will go to a negative point. Has that blue LED gone out? Not completely, but it's very dim. Let's touch that to turn it back on again. Um, <clears throat> so actually I only need a red wire on here to pick off some positive. So it'll be positive of the cell that I'm uh, connected to with my negative. And then the thick positive will actually go to this black wire here because we're trying to measure the current in that black wire. So let's get all that wired up. So first thing is to cut this short. That will do. And then uh, solder that onto these two wires and put some hot glue on there so that uh, we don't constantly bend the wires. Right, that's all done. I've got my uh, ring terminals on here. So I think the first thing I'll do is put black on the most negative part of the battery. Then I'll attach uh, this little red one that goes through the boost converter. That should turn the four volts or so on the cell into 12 volts and power the ammeter up. So we should see that happen. And then I'll worry about the red one. Doesn't matter if red and black touch together, that's not a problem because they're effectively shorted anyway by the shunt. Um, but I don't want to short anything that would cause a problem. Right, let's get the black screwed onto here first. Okay, so if I put red on uh, four volts above black, then the ammeter should come on. Let's try that. Yes, it does, uh, but I've got it upside down because the decimal point is that way around. Again, got to make sure that doesn't touch positive because that goes through the shunt and that would make smoke. In fact, while I do this, I'm going to, I've just put red onto the ground as well, just so that it doesn't fly around and touch something. And now I've got to try and get this over onto here without causing a short up at this end. And also trying to keep the um, dots on the LC LED at the bottom. But let's put that on there. And that's powered up. Oh, we got some current, which is surprising <laughs> because I've no idea where that's coming from. Anyway, let's get that screwed on. Now, to measure the current uh, in this black wire, I need to remove it from the most negative part of the battery and put it on this red wire so that the current flowing in this black wire passes through the ammeter down to the most negative point of the battery and then we can see that current. The only thing is, will the uh, balancer mind having its ground connection removed um, while all the positives are still connected? Well, we'll soon find out. Uh, okay, let's turn that on. Are these attached to each other? I'll try and make sure they are. Um, okay, not seeing any current, but then perhaps that's uh, to be expected because all the cells are in balance. I'll just get a nut and bolt to hold these two together. Right, to see some current on this uh, ammeter, I think all I need to do is 
upset the balance of the cells. So I'm going to put this bulb across a pair of cells. Um, I think if I take these middle two blocks, I can just put it across there. So the bulb has lit and now we can see that 13 milliamps is flowing in this negative wire um, to redistribute uh, energy between the cells. I've got to make sure that this is permanently attached. And then if I remove that, it should settle down. And it shouldn't really matter where I put this. So let's put it across um, these two. So I'm basically putting eight volts through this 24 volt bulb. Let's put it across these. And again, it upsets the balance. I'll just bring that into shot so you can see the bulb filament. You can see that it's lit up. That's upsetting the balance. And there is a negative current in this uh, black wire. Now, are we ever going to see a positive current? We may not in that black wire. I may need to move this meter to a different uh, one of these five wires in order to see a positive current. Um, a negative current means that I think current is coming out of the black wire. So it's, it's coming out of the cell through the meter this way and up the black wire into this unit. Not quite sure what that means just at the moment, but certainly I can place this across um, cells like this. Oh, that is a positive current. Okay, that was a positive current. So we will see a positive current. But if I place it on these two cells, uh, let's do it like that, we see a negative current. And that's why I bought this bidirectional ammeter because the currents flowing in these, the wires of this balancer uh, will sometimes be positive and sometimes negative. Um, so that's essentially what I wanted to do today. Um, what I really want now is five meters, uh, one in each of these uh, balancer wires, so that we can see when the cell goes out of balance, the five currents in these five wires. I mean, maybe I wouldn't need all five, but I'd like to start with that and then perhaps work backwards to fewer ammeters uh, when I work out which ones are important. Uh, now, the other thing that this meter tells me is if I turn the balancer off, by touching the switch, you can immediately see the current goes down to zero, even if you can't see the blue LED fade out immediately. Um, let's unbalance a pair of cells with this bulb, make sure that's in shot. Now, obviously there's no current flowing because the balancer's not actually running, but I'll do a bit of unbalancing, then turn the balancer on and we've got five milliamps flowing. Perhaps I'll leave this on a bit longer and make this cell a bit, uh, this pack a bit more out of balance. Right, this lamp's just been resting across these two points, which is effectively these two center cells um, for a minute or so. Let's turn the balancer on, see the current, and it's now 18 milliamps. And if I take off the cause of the imbalance, the balancer, oh, that's a bit warm. Uh, the balancer fairly quickly brings everything back into balance. These balances are very good. Um, I've got one, an eight cell balancer on my lithium ion phosphate uh, eight cell pack in the shed. And that's been running for about a year and I've not noticed any degradation in the uh, capacity of the pack. So yeah, these balancers are very good and they can run up to reasonably high currents. The only thing they say about these is they have a fairly high quiescent current draw. This will, when the cells all get down to a certain voltage, this will go into a standby state, which is a low power state. Uh, the light presumably will go off. And uh, is that on or off? That's on, I think. But it's just got everything balanced. Um, but it still does have a bit of a current draw. So they say these balancers are only really suitable for large batteries. I see it slightly differently. I think they're only really suitable for batteries which you charge on a daily basis. And if, the, of course, if a solar panel is hooked up to this, well, then you're charging it on a daily basis. Yeah, the balancer's gone off now. Let's turn it back 
on. The touch switch isn't terribly reliable, so maybe you do need ammeters to actually see what's going on. And uh, we're not getting any current flowing, so let's balance this back on here. And there's some current flowing, courtesy of the balancer. Well, that's all I wanted to do for this video, so I'm going to call it there. Cheerio.